Daily Bro on side day 557. While taking in my younger son's baseball game last evening, uh, it occurred to me that there is a, a nice little example of the difference between men and women between baseball and softball. Before there was a softball game going right next door at the uh, adjacent field. I'm sitting there watching. My son's pitching the first inning, and I'm watching and everything, and it's just a real solemn event. Every once in a while, you know, all right, now you're ready. All right. Come on, 11. Come on, 1-1. One, one. You know, or whatever. You know, it's, like, it's just random, like, every once in a while somebody will say something. But it's otherwise, it's like a church mouse. Like, you just, you just nothing's going on. Meanwhile, over to my right, it's like like those it's probably like i don't know eight nine year old and then my, my son's in like 13 14 so these are like eight nine year old softball girls right and they're hooting and hollering and screaming and chanting the people in the dugout are they got these like hey, da, 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 you know just they're just marching and back and forth and it, everybody's just boisterous as can be it's like a combination of like a it's like a Chuck E. Cheese birthday party mixed with like a Taylor Swift concert. And I'm looking over there and I'm like, why are they having so much seemingly more fun than uh, than the boys over here who are obviously, you know, got a lot more skill and power and speed just by virtue of the fact that they're older and stronger and been playing longer. And I mean, it's, it's obviously an entertaining game. I'm watching it in between innings and breaks and stuff. And, you know, uh, they seem to be having a great old time. But I was like, that's the difference between men and women, you know? I go to a concert, I stand there and I watch and I study the people playing their instruments. And, you know, I enjoy it immensely, but I don't, I don't dance, I don't sing, I don't, I've been in a couple mosh pits, but I just as soon stand off to the side and just watch people play and study the nuances of their, uh, their musicianship, I guess, and, and just see how well of a facsimile they can put forward. Uh, and then women are over there like showing their titties and, you know, drinking I mean, it just it's just a it's a completely different animal it really is so uh, I thought that was interesting and while we're talking about baseball let's talk briefly about um, what I think they should do to professional sports now admittedly the NBA is the only professional sport I have ever watched with any regularity I don't know nothing about football uh, hockey baseball I mean I can watch baseball's okay but it's just kind of slow you know um, but at any rate, here's what I think they should do. One week out of the year, maybe like the NBA's All-Star Weekend where they just, you know, let loose and have some fun and whatnot, each of the sports should do a little something different for the fans and to see who really has the skills that we think they have, you know what I mean? For example, baseball. Let's play a game without gloves, all right? Let's see how tough we really are. If you ever caught a baseball with your hands, you know, some pop fly or something, his stings a little bit, right? Football, right? No helmets. You can wear everything else. No helmets. Let's see how hard you're going to tackle now. Let's see how hard you're going to push the ball knowing somebody could just rip your head right off your body. Uh, there'd just be a body running around, you know? Uh, let's see. Basketball. No shoes, right? Let's see what your vertical is. Hey, they measure you in the combine or whatever the NBA calls it. Uh, you know, let's see how high and fast you can run and jump with no supportage. Uh, on your feet. Of course, if you've ever seen it, basketball players, uh, professional, especially uh, feet, man, those things are just mangled mess. It's it's like they've got, it's like their feet, by the time they're 23, their feet are already arthritic. It looks like, you know, what is it, Chinese or Japanese people that used to bound their foot. That's what their feet look like. They're just all, there's no toenails left. Just everybody's got hammer toe and turf toe and whatever else other toe you can get plantar fasciitis the foot just takes a damn beating so let's take them shoes off and get them ugly ass shoe, uh, feet out there on the court and let's see what's going on hockey no sticks right no sticks you can still skate really fast but you got to put your hands down to get that little puck right and now you got you know basically razors riding by cutting your fingers off and stuff and let's just see what goes on tennis i haven't decided but i'm thinking barefoot but only on dirt you know or sand whatever the sand dirt whatever the brown tracks are that they play on those courts. Uh, and then what was the other one? Uh, I guess that's it. That's all the major sports. Soccer, nobody really cares. So anyway, I think that would be a fun little, uh, you know, and, and just play to like, uh, just play like a little five minute quarter, right? Something like that. Uh, you know, just a little, uh, an exhibition for the fans to see what's going on. And just in case you didn't know, 
the Mighty Mighty Boston's, who I don't think are a band anymore. A talented little group. I think they're out of Boston. And uh, I got a couple of their albums, but uh, they're interesting. They put out some interesting stuff. But they have a guy who's kind of like their quasi-tour manager, and I think they call him The Boston. And a guy named Ben Carr, and all he does is come out on stage and dance. Doesn't sing. Well, I think he does some like minor backup vocals, but he doesn't sing lead on anything. He don't play an instrument. No, he just comes out and dances for however long they would play. And I just always found that to be a really weird, uh, weird thing. I mean, it's cool. I mean, there's more people in that damn band than Slipknot, you know. It's like looking at Chicago. It was just 84 people in the band. And so it's cool that they let their buddy like, hey, man, let's let Ben come out and, uh, you know, just dance and we'll pay him and all that. And, uh, you know, that's kind of cool. Uh, I was looking at uh, some Hamas stuff this morning and Hezbollah and some other terrorist organizations. What? Terrorist? Huh? Yes, terrorist organizations. Okay. And I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, they've all got their logos. Some of them better than others. Like, whoever did, like, ISIS logo, it looks like a three-year-old did it, you know. But, um, I mean, I, I'm no graphic artist, but I could probably have come up with something better than whatever they got there. And, and uh, same thing with Al-Qaeda. There's just kind of low rent. But the Hezbollah and the Hamas, they've actually got a, you know, a, a copyrighted looking, you know, got the Dome of the Rock and some cross swords and all this stuff. And I got to thinking to myself, I was like, man, I bet it was rough trying to find a graphic designer that was willing to do that job. You know, Hamas comes into your graphic design department in Palestine. And they're like, oh, we need a new, uh, we need a new uh, logo for our group. I'm like, all right, what's going on? It's like, it's Hamas. And you're like, oh, shit. You know, and uh, because, I mean, these people are, I mean, if you remember, the, the Arab world is a completely different animal. A bunch of inbred weirdos over there that don't seem to care anything about your feelings, you know. I mean, they throw gay people off of roofs and stone people to death. And, you know, if women aren't covered up and blah, 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 Sharia law is a little rough, right? I mean, if we all remember uh, the late uh, Muammar Gaddafi, or however he said his name, uh, getting anally sodomized in the town square with, like, a rifle bayonet on camera, if you've ever seen a beheading video, it's a little gruesome when they do it with a with a Rambo, uh, you know, K bar, you know, a knife, you know. So it had to be a little bit butt puckering, let's say. It's not like you're making a, a wedding cake for a, a really expensive or you know a, a rich family who's going to be a little disappointed if it doesn't taste that great. No, you're making a logo for Hamas. And if it doesn't turn out right, I'm imagining they're probably not going to like it, and you're probably going to end up somewhere in a uh, a shallow ditch in the middle of nowhere um and so i just thought that was interesting that somebody drew that up maybe it was an internal thing but maybe it was a design firm um and maybe that design firm is now defunct because they threw everybody off of buildings you know and somebody said the other day if you could have put uh liquids unlimited amount of liquids in each of your five fingers what would it be i'll play your silly game gasoline diesel water milk and snake venom not just any snake venom. Hemorrhagic, right? I want all the the blood clotting properties to go away. I think that's what that is. That or neurological. But yeah, snake venom would be like, I mean, like my pointer finger. That would save me so much money and it would uh, adapt me to my enemies if need be. Have a great one today. Be getting.